Hello. Welcome to my studio. I am artist and creativity coach Helen Klebesadl, and today I'm going to be sharing with you some ideas about finding flow in the art making process. And I'm going to do that while I go through an exercise that's a regular part of my creative practice. So I'm going to ask you to watch me do this exercise while I share these ideas. Flow is the state of concentration and engagement that can be achieved when com completing a task that challenges your skills. That skill can be as an artist or as a athlete or a craftsperson, anything that requires you to use your skills in a way that challenges you just a little bit so that you can become completely absorbed in the task. Time becomes irrelevant, and the activity is joyful and pleasurable. I'm going to demonstrate something I regularly do as a part of my uh, practice as a flow-inducing form of active meditation. It's aimed at silencing the worries of the world and giving myself a mental break from all the stress and concerns that make up a regular part of my life that's a regular part of everyone's life. The art making I'm doing today is entirely focused on the process of making. The resulting piece that I'll end up with at the end documents the process, but it is the process that is important to me. As a professional artist, I work to include these kinds of processes in my art making as much as possible. I'm skilled with watercolor, so that it is uh, this kind of exercise that I'm showing you today uses those skills. But you can choose to do your own exercise using the tools you're most familiar with. Choose something you already are familiar with, and that you know you have a fair amount of chance of success in using already. Maybe, maybe choose a pencil. You know how to use a pencil. You know how to use it successfully. Let's say you decide to draw a spiral with your pencil. You know how to draw a spiral. Just start. This could get boring, though. So uh, what's going to make you stay with it? It could get boring if it's not challenging enough. You want to have your skill level um, uh, used, but you want to push it just a little bit. You want to go a little further than you've gone before in your, in your risk-taking with this new tool, or not-so-new tool. So you're going to draw a spiral, but how do you draw it in a way that challenges your skill level just a little bit? So you know you'll be successful, but it challenges you just a little bit. How about focusing not on the pencil line? but on the white line left between the pencil lines. How then can you make the line and not have to have the pencil lines touch? How thin can it be? That is what I'm really trying to do here in my own spiral painting today. I'm trying to paint my shapes and play with the colors and bring my wet into wet together, but I'm very comfortable with that. What's challenging to me is trying to keep that white line between the, the lines of watercolor as thin as possible and not have them touch, knowing full well that if they do touch, it probably will be beautiful. But my goal, my effort, is to see how close I can paint with my watercolors and still enjoy them, but leave that very thin line of white paper without paint on it behind. So I'm going to concentrate on that. And my goal, my goal is to fill this page as much as possible with these lines of watercolor and drip this color into the paint, drip this color into the wet areas, but leave behind that very thin line of white. And you can do the same thing with just a pencil or with some other art making tool that is particularly um, uh, comfortable for you. Choose your tool, choose your challenge, and then immerse yourself in the process. I can play with the paint and colors that I love so much, um, but my goal is to see how thin I can keep that line. 
even though it would, again, be beautiful if I mess it up. So I'm not too worried about it. I'm excited to take the risk, and I'm excited to challenge myself. And it's a good thing because I've come up with an exercise that is a good balance between my skill level and abilities, but just challenging enough to keep me focused and to challenge my full attention. I have to give it my full attention or I'm going to mess it up. You can do that, too, using whatever material you, you already love and whatever uh, process you already have some skill with. Um, but the idea is to maintain that balance between skill and challenge. It can't be too easy or it will be boring. And it can't be too challenging or you won't have any kind of belief that you can reach success. But it can be just a little bit more than you've done before. Flow requires a skill level, but it also requires a challenge to engage your full attention. As I immerse myself in this making, my particular goal of keeping that white line connected, I, am da I find myself drawn into the process that takes me into flow, that draws me down into the act of making as a form of active meditation. I can breathe deeply, I can be calm, I can immerse myself and focus on what I'm doing in a way that quiets all the fears and worries of the world around me and gives me something totally pleasurable to focus on that has just enough challenge, just enough challenge and just enough sense of risk to keep me engaged and demand my full attention. So I deploy all of my skills toward a particular goal. And I, when I reach that sweet spot where I'm testing my skills and abilities a little beyond what I know, I find myself immersed in flow. Stress and worry is replaced with a sense of pleasure and accomplishment to the point that there are neurochemicals coming out in my body, out of my brain, that are helpful to my sense of well-being. They flood my body and make me feel wonderful. And they close out all the distractions around me. I get lost in flow. And it's where that effort I'm undertaking becomes an end in itself, where everything I touch seems to just work, where I'm fully present, with my attention and in the actions I'm undertaking, and it feels just natural to do it. I can immerse myself to the point that I lose track of time, to the point that I'll forget hunger and other concerns and just stay with myself in the pleasure of this moment, just laying down this color, just dropping in these colors, just focusing on that line where I can make sure that I reach my goal, where I can just pursue this experience to the exclusion of all other things, where I no longer worry about anything. I just immerse myself in this process for a little while, giving myself a break. When I do art this way, the process is a point, and the artwork, again, just simply documents the process. At the same time, my pleasure and skill can be seen as in the resulting art. It'll carry some of my joy with it and some of the calm I've created with it so that the viewer can experience it too in some small way. But for me, the point is the process. And as a professional artist, I will often look for other ways to bring this kind of experience into my painting. In fact, when I have a large challenge coming before me, maybe a conference or something I'm organizing. I will set up a painting process that deploys these kinds of skills that requires me to just spend some time focusing on the painting and the process of painting to the exclusion of all other concerns and worries. And it becomes a form of active meditation that quiets, quiets me, quiets my mind relaxes my body, and gives me a little charge of, uh, of neuro, neuro chemicals that make the world seem good again.
I've often thought of artists as tight T personalities who like risk, who really don't like pain and don't like having uh, um, to worry about endangering their lives, but who love risk and love the experience of risk taking and the charge it gives you. You can do that in art and it can be a part of your flow process. As I create my own art, my professional art, I also use these processes. I mean my skill level, what I'm trying to do, and the challenge I'm trying to meet. It's just a little reach for me so that I have to pay attention in order to achieve it. It can't be so easy that I am bored by it, and it can't be so hard that it's outside the possibility of me succeeding. It's got to be in that sweet spot, just right. And if I get there, there will be a sense of effortlessness and ease. Everything will just start to work in harmony, and it will feel effortless. All my decisions will be made automatically. One thing will lead directly to the next, and I don't have to really think about it anymore. It's not thoughtless, but it's mindful. I'm totally present. I'm paying attention. I'm being a part of the process, but it's not a difficult process to be a part of. There's almost an altered sense of perception. I lose my sense of time. It can be um, that I look up in two hours and it felt like 10 minutes. It just has all gone away and I've lost my sense of hunger and, and any other bodily need I might have. Or it can be the opposite. It can be that I'm working on something for just a little bit of time, and it can seem like it took a really long time. Or just a couple minutes can seem like 10 minutes or an hour, because I'm so aware. I'm so aware of every second. The time stretches. But time is altered. Most artists I know um, know they've had a flow experience because they know that they have had times in their life when their art making so immersed them that they looked up and hours had gone by. Um, the purpose of exercises like this is to be able to help you get into that flow state whenever you want to. You want that melting together of your action and your consciousness. You want that complete involvement in what you're doing with no room for the worries and fears and distractions or self-judgment and self-consciousness that's so much a part of the art making process. If this form of art making is only about the process of doing it, then there's no room for self-criticism or judgment. You succeeded when you create it. And you may find that you uh, love the works afterwards, but that's not their point. Their point is to give you a, pro a chance to go through this practice, to have this experience of complete immersion and joy that comes from it. The point of the piece I've done today was simply to have the experience of flow. The artwork is not about the final product, but it is about the process of creating it and the opportunity to challenge myself and my skill level while also uh, taking just a little bit of risk, pushing it just a little further, seeing what I can do, and um, even if I fail. And if I fail, it's not a tragedy, but, if I, uh, but I have the goal of not failing. I have the goal of keeping that line just perfect. And uh, so that clear, clear goal... I can see if I've done it or not. I know immediately. And I focus so much on it that I am excluding all the other distractions that might be around me. And that, that achieving of that goal while doing a process that I love so, so much um, gives me a sense of well-being that uh, goes beyond um, this simple moment. I use these kinds of processes in my professional art making too, and I find that um, when I am in flow, there's a certain kind of level of risk-taking and understanding of the work that I'm doing that allows me to go further in, uh, in an artwork than I may have gone before. Um, this teaches you a kind of resilience. 
It teaches you that you can push the edges, that you can try new things, and you can even fail at them. But there's another side, and it can be fun and interesting and exciting and joy-inducing to push those edges and to try new things. It may seem like a simple little art exercise here today, um, and, and again, when you do it for yourself, but in reality, it's teaching you how to push your, push your abilities, how to challenge yourself, um, but while doing it with something you really love. So I encourage you, I thank you, um, thank you for joining me on this uh, uh, finding flow and art making exercise. Um, please join me on my website at creativitylessons.com and uh, um, please find your own place of flow and make it a regular practice. You will not regret it. So now I'll just ask you to sit back and enjoy yourself for the next few minutes. I'm going to speed up the uh, video that shows you how this process proceeded. I immersed myself in it. I had a really good time, and I actually stayed with it for about an hour and a half um, until it was finished. And so I share that with you now, and I, I ask you to find flow in your own art-making process. Thank you so much for joining me today. Take care.